Hey guys, so it is time for our Myth and Monsters episode. It's the last day of the month, so that's what we do. I think it's episode nine. I, oh, episode I don't know. Eight, but I think it's really episode nine. <laughs> and know. we're going to talk about shadow people and black dogs. Yeah. Taylor's doing black dogs. I'm very excited to hear that. I'm doing Appreciate shadow people. people yeah. yeah, this was actually a request from daughter number three. She is terrified of shadow people. And she said, I will listen to your podcast. She, she doesn't write much, so she doesn't listen to our podcast otherwise. But she said, I, I like your myth and monster ones. And I want you to do shadow people and I'll listen to it. So that's where we are. So, and I actually, I have to tell you, I was kind of bored today. My brain is still dead from court last week. So I thought that I might look for a documentary on shadow people. And so I spent the afternoon kind of watching pieces of documentary. So anyway, it should be a fun episode. That's fun research to go and watch a documentary for it. It is. Um, so shadow people, it is defined as a patch of shadow it's a living humanoid figure interpreted as the presence of a spirit or other entity by believers in the paranormal or supernatural. That was from Wikipedia. Um, other definitions, I don't know that you call them definitions, but other claims of what they are, they are seen as dark silhouettes with human shapes and profiles that flicker in and out of your peripheral vision. A blacker than night human shaped shadow that people see walking through their bedroom, hallway, and living room. No thanks. Yes, some of them have reports of red eyes. They're also called the hat people because a lot of them have hats, whether it's no. a, a fedora or a top hat. Um, I don't know why it makes it so much worse, but it does. I don't, I'm not a fan of the top hat things. I know. And then animals can see and sense them as well, which is freaky. Of course they can. Yeah. So stories about shadow people have been around forever and ever and ever. The Quran actually mentions pitch black sapient beings that aren't entirely spiritual or physical. Yeah. Ancient Europe reportedly believed that shadow beings desired blood and without it, they couldn't be reborn. No thanks. I know. And in modern times, people are seeing them, apparently the reports are skyrocketing for some reason in the in modern times of these Weird. reports of shadow people. Yeah. I wonder if that has something to do with like uh, the internet, you know, the, the um, stories of them are spreading and some more people are likely to think that they see something or something like that. I don't know. Maybe so. I think Jordan watch, watches, uh, well not watches, but on Instagram, there's some kind of storyline about shadow people. Oh, so yeah. like you said, social media has it everywhere. Um, one of the thoughts about why the uh, rate of reports is, is rising is because they're, the creatures are wanting to make themselves seen. No thanks. Well, you can just not do that. <laughs> it is 2020. So what better year for the shadow people to come than 2020? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with 2020. Come in 2021. Like, let's just make that its own thing. <laughs> but I'm 2020 can just chill. I know, I know. Uh, there's apparently a progression in sightings. Some people only see them once, you know, once in their lifetime. And they just see a flicker out of the corner of their eye and they're like, whatever. But the people that see them more than once, they go from being a flicker, there's a progression, to going to full on, front on, you see them right in front of your face. I, I, no, I, I hate that because, so when I sit in my rocking chair right behind me, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, when I sit in my rocking chair, I often leave my front door open and I have a curtain to make it so that nobody can see inside and everything. But all the time, I will see like a flicker of movement over there. And so I'll turn and there's nothing there, of course. And I, and you know, nobody ever walks by my apartment. I live in the corner, mm -hmm. um, so nobody ever walks over here but I'll see like this flash of, you know, shadow or whatever. So I don't want it to come into my apartment <laughs> and stand in front of my face. I'm not about this. Yes, definitely. And your sister across the hall agrees with you. Great. Um, most of the reports about shadow people are negative. They're scary. They're, Great. you know, they're not these, oh, what a neat little creature. Let's try to, you know, it's, you're terrified. Right. Um, there are different types of shadow people. There's 
the bedroom watchers. These are the figures that are discovered standing by your bedside or in a corner of the room when a person awakes at night. No. They seem to stare at people in the bed, even though they have no visible eyes or facial features. Most do not behave in a threatening manner, though their presence is often terrifying. They remain, they can remain for long periods of time and when observed disappear suddenly or melt through walls and ceilings. Some act aggressively toward people, causing choking sensations similar to the old hag. I regret so, listening to the story. <laughs> there's a whole other, uh, which we can do an episode on, where the old hag or the crone sits on your chest and sucks. That's like sleep paralysis. Yes, yeah. and, it, and, and a lot of people with sleep paralysis see these shadow figures. And so scientists, that's one of their attempted definitions is, oh, it's sleep paralysis. Right. There are shadows on walls. These figures appear suddenly as dark human outlines on walls, which detach from the walls and then move about the room. No. Moving shadows. These figures appear abruptly and move quickly through a room as though on a mission. They come through the walls. They melt into the walls. They seem to pay no attention to the people that are present, you know, in our world. Or they watch them intently. No, thanks. Well, how do you know if they're watching you if you can't see their eyes? I guess you can feel it. Don't you ever have the feeling where someone's yeah. watching you and, you know? Yeah, that's fair. All right. I still don't like it. I know. Then there's background visitors. These are figures that are usually not seen but are captured in photographs. So we aren't seeing them while they're there, but they show up in a photograph in the background. And their forms are noticeable on walls, doors, or in the window, or whatever, in the background of a photograph. And then there's haunting presences. These figures appear in places known or thought to be haunted. They move about, act with intelligence, and appear to, and disappear suddenly. They may follow people. In some cases, shadow people are associated with bad luck. They could just not. Yeah, it's interesting. And I, I don't know that shadow people may be too broad of a term. There may right. be multiple things that are considered shadow people because there's so many different things, but it's yeah. interesting. So there are theories about what these are. Some think that they're ghosts, the mm -hmm. true form of a ghost. Some think that they might be time travelers. <clears throat> okay. Which your Uncle Tom, I think I've said this before, his theory on UFOs is that those are time travelers and yeah. that they can't interact with our world. So the thought is that time travelers come from the future, but they are only seen as shadow and they're observing us. That's why they seem to be staring at us so intently, they're watching things. But I kind of disagree with that because what is so interesting about coming back in time and watching someone sleep? Right, you know, right, or in other their than home. to just be creepy. Yeah, I, so I'm not quite sure about that one. Um, some say that um, these flickers of darkness are on a personal mission. Some think the good side, these are guardian angels. Some think on the bad side, these are, you know, demons or whatever. Right. Um, the scientific thing, logical explanation is that it is some kind of psychological conditions, sleep deprivation, uh, sleep paralysis, like you said, hallucinations, dementia, right. um, meth use has been linked to seeing shadow people. Interesting. Which to me is interesting because is it because they're on the drugs and they're hallucinating or is it because meth people, something happens in their brain to open the door to allow them to see these things? Right. Um, some think that they're watchers for demons. They're looking for souls to be taken. No. <laughs> yeah, you don't like the demon thing. Mm -hmm. um, interdimensional beings. There is the theory that there are multiple dimensions and that right. some of them are parallel to us and very close to us and that we're seeing these shadows or beings from the other dimension when our dimensions get too close. And so that would make sense as to the ones that don't seem to notice anybody else there. Right. And then also the ones that are staring 
at you and you like turn and you can see it like maybe they're also just seeing us as shadow people so we're just like staring at, a, at each other being like why is it staring at me and yeah it's just like <laughs> yeah. mutually staring at each other quantum theory actually talks about the different vibrations of the different um dimensions and i'm not a scientist so i don't know enough about quantum theory but they say that sometimes you know sometimes vibrations can what cycle and that every now and then the vibrations of maybe our two dimensions get to the point where they're close enough that we can see into each other's dimensions right huh which is interesting um some people claim that they're energy vampires that they have no form so they want to feed off the energy which is why they come to you at night which is when you're stuck in a place that they can get to you without you running away you're right there you're easy easy pickings i don't i don't like that one um a lot of people say that they might be souls looking for bodies to possess which leads to the theory of the black eyed children, which is also a whole different episode. No, no, no. I don't like the black eyed children. I've listened to a podcast episode on that's why we drink and it was horrifying. So no it thanks. was, and it was the shadow people documentary. One of the ones I watched today, it talked about the theory that black eyed children are possessed by shadow people. Don't like that. Fascinating. Another one, another idea, which could be good for urban fantasy writing is that it's residual timelines. Oh, so right now I'm watching the umbrella corporation. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which deals with time travel and little things can happen to change a potential timeline. And one theory is that these shadows that we see are residual effects of, you know, that's just you in this bedroom in a different timeline it's a residual piece of yourself from this timeline that no longer exists weird which is but why would it be like up against the wall or in a corner mm -hmm. i don't go and stand in my corners even in me this neither. Timeline, so <laughs> me neither yeah and then i was trying to look and see what books and shows had them supernatural yeah. had one season one episode 16 and the shadow men in that episode were actually demons of darkness. Right. There was a 1985 episode of the Twilight Zone called The Shadow Man, and it dealt with a teenage boy who had a shadow person living under his bed. No, no. And that episode portrayed the shadow man as fitting into that hat man. No. You know, he had the oh. hat. Um, and it is believed that these shadow people can actually kill human beings, but they don't harm the one that, whose bed they live under. What, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then- but I, don't, I don't want it to be like, oh yes, come live under my bed so that you don't hurt me, but also like, don't, kill. don't be under my bed. I and know. then I get to be the one that gets murdered. I don't know. <laughs> there was a 2013 horror film called Shadow People that depicts a fictional sleep study program because it can be linked to sleep uh, uh, yeah. paralysis and sleep deprivation. And it was this fictional sleep study was done in the 1970s and patients were reporting seeing these shadowy intruders and then died in their sleep. And um, that I think I might have seen that. It's supposedly based on true events. Huh. And then even in Disney's The Frog Princess, the oh, yeah. that creepy guy, the the antagonist. I don't remember, his name, I don't remember his name either, but he summons the shadow figures to help him in his screen uh, in his schemes while he's hunting the the frog prince. Right. So I wanted to look up actual people and their stories about what they've actually seen. So here's one. I was only about 10 or 11 when I went to this house. It was daytime and the building was well lit. I looked into a few rooms and saw nothing out of the ordinary, out of the ordinary until I turned into a hallway. At the other end of the hall looking at me, it was at the other end of the hall looking at me. Although it had no eyes, that feeling was undeniable. The shadow person and I watched each other for some time. I didn't think it was real. But then it started walking slowly towards me. So I turned and ran. I, uh, looked, yeah. I looked over my shoulder and it had traveled about seven meters in, a split, in that split second that I looked away. But when I had my eyes on it, it, it moved slowly. 
So I got out of the house and looked again, and it had stopped at the door, almost like it was unable to leave the house. It turned and walked back into the house. No. This one, I have two sons who often talk about what they call the shadow man. The latest experience was when I had buckled both of them in the car and I had forgotten something in my house. I went back in to get the item. I heard my five-year-old screaming. I went running back out. My son was in shock screaming, did you see it? Did you see it? I said, see what? And then my six-year-old said calmly, the shadow man. They both said he was standing right there on my deck. The six-year-old says that the black that the black and the white shadow follows my five-year-old son. They say they talk to them all the time. Great, awesome, cool. <laughs> this one is when my wife was pregnant with our daughter, we saw one in the house that we were renting. I had just gotten off the graveyard shift and we were chatting before going to bed and my wife said she saw something in the back room. Our cat was on watch, perched on my wife's belly, occasionally growling. I was a big skeptic. You know, that's a bunch of BS, all that kind of stuff. So I started toward the back room with that attitude and stopped in my tracks when both of us saw the hunched black shape move and turn to look at us with those horrible red eyes. I honestly wish I could say I didn't see it, but I did. But, and it still freaks me out. How did they, did they stay there? Because I would be gone. Yeah. I, I mean, I got pregnant, pregnant wife and gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, and the cat. Bring the cat. <laughs> I know, right? And the cat saw it. It was growling. Oh, man. So, let's see. Staring, starting at four and, or five, when we moved into our new house, my daughter has been afraid of our basement. She said that she could hear children laughing, weird sounds, and that dark man lived down there. She also said she had a ghost friend she called Bradley staying upstairs and that Bradley keeps the dark man away from the top floor. When she was around 15, she was home with a friend sitting on the couch watching a movie. Both she and her friend saw a dark shadow in the shape of an adult upper torso hovering by the front door. Within seconds of seeing the shape, it flew towards them and then straight down the stairs. My daughter said it was scary, but she's been more accustomed to the bizarre things happening. The friend has never come over again. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and then this one is about, this person thinks that shadow people are demons. She says, I'm pretty sure that shadow people are demons. One night I was having a party and I had just gotten a Ouija board for my birthday. Everyone talked me into using it. So we started playing. Uh -huh. Then weird stuff started happening. Shadowy figures started to appear in my room, a lot of shadow people, and it wasn't any of our shadows. Those were different. Some had red eyes, and then red orbs started coming through my room. Wow. We made a protective circle, which, how do kids know how to do that? I, <laughs> you know, anyway, and we all tried to stay in it. It got really cold in my room, and we could all see our breath. Wow. But some of my friends couldn't see the shadow people. They could feel them. There was an all out evil feeling in the room. We all got too freaked out to move. We were just like, whoa. And then one of the shadow people changed and got all scary looking. I could explain, but I don't want to go into detail. Let's just say Pumpkinhead, the demon guy from the scary movies, although his head wasn't a pumpkin. So we screamed and finally ran out of the room. My parents thought we were crazy. That night when we went to bed, my closets were glowing red and the orbs were going through my room. We didn't go to sleep until like 5 a.m. And then we only slept not even four hours. That was freaky. And the stuff didn't die down for a while after that. That was the last time I used the Ouija board. I threw it somewhere deep down in one of my closets. Cute. So in writing, this has huge potential for writing urban fantasy. Sure you know, does. I'm still not a fan. I mean, I would use it in urban fantasy, but I hate it. <laughs> and they are. It's scary. And, and what's really scary is that these people, a lot of the people that report seeing them are normal, rational people, just like some of the people that see UFOs, you know, are normal people that you wouldn't say were prone to doing drugs or, you know, hallucinations or being crazy or whatever. Right. But what if, what if it's someone who's stuck outside of time and is trying to get home? So for them. Get out of my house. They're sitting in there in your room, staring at you, trying to get you to see them. No, what? that's super unfortunate, buddy, but uh, do that somewhere else. <laughs> what if it's a warning about a timeline gone wrong? 
and they're trying to get us to make the right change to fix the future. Guess my timeline's still going to go wrong because I want you to leave. <laughs> what if it is demons looking for souls? They can really get out then. What if it's souls looking for hosts? Uh, again, can get out. <laughs> what if it is a disease, a virus, or some kind of intelligent magic looking for a host? No, thank you. And the fact that these sightings are increasing and that a person who sees it more than once, it gets more and more visible to them. What does that mean? What could you do with that? It means I'm going to die someday and it's going <laughs> to be a shadow person just standing in front of me and Capson's going to watch while it murders me. I think he would probably growl or he might go up to it and try to go <laughs> like he does to your father. <laughs> I think he... I think he would run under the bed and leave me for death. He, he might, but that's all I've got. There's so many stories out there. It's fascinating. I may have to post some on a blog. Yeah, yeah. that's so spooky. I hate all of that. Cause you know, I mean, like I see the flickers in the corner of my eyes or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you know, I'll sit in my rocking chair and I'll just see something, you know, just flicker over by the door and I'm like, okay. And then now that you're like, oh no, pretty soon it's going to be right in front of you. I'm just super <laughs> looking forward to that. <laughs> Yep. No, that was really cool though. Like it's super interesting to think about because I, it is really terrifying and I don't like the black eyed kids thing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have so. to do a, an episode on the black eyed kids because that's just one theory of what they are is that right. it's shadow people inhabiting them. There's other yeah. theories about the black eyed children. Yeah. Wow. That's spooky. So tell me about black dogs. Yes. Less, less spooky. Um, really? I, I don't know about that. Well, so I think it's, it's, I think it's less spooky to me because, you know, I don't necessarily like there aren't, I don't know. I can't explain it. I feel like it's less spooky to me than shadow people. Maybe because I do see shadow, like the flickers in my eyes or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe it's cause you know, I'm more likely to see a flicker in my eye and it's like a shadow person than I am to see a black dog. That's like, maybe actually, you've got shadow people. Listen, no, I don't. <laughs> Maybe. Right. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. All right, black dogs. Um, I chose this one just because I really love the, the, the black dog mythology. I've used it in books that I've written before. Um, and sometimes, you know, they don't make it to the final draft sometimes, or I am going to rewrite something that might not include it again or whatever. Um, but I've always loved the idea of them, um, and, and so that's why I chose to do it. So a black dog is a motif of a spectral or demonic entity found primarily in the folklore of the British Isles. Uh, it's essentially a nocturnal apparition, um, in some cases a shapeshifter, and it's often said to be associated with the devil or is described as a ghost or a supernatural hellhound. Um, yes. Yeah, so, and it's, it's appearance, like, if you see it, that's typically an omen of death. Uh, that's the connotation that's attached to it is like if you see it someone you know or you yourself is probably gonna die Yeah, you, you probably talk about this but Harry Potter did, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you have that in your notes that were you gonna say? I do I have it in my notes okay. and I have there's a specific one um, Named Padfoot which I thought was interesting because she uses oh, her She sure does. She must have found that in her research that, so that's why yeah so i'll talk about that one a little bit more okay um black dogs are generally supposed to be larger than a normal dog and have large glowing eyes people say that they glow orange or they grow, glow yellow or even red a lot of the time um it's associated with electrical storms and crossroads also places of execution and ancient pathways interesting the crossroad thing which is another demon hellhound Thing. I mean, Supernatural yeah. had hellhounds all the way through, which could be black dogs. I'm sure you're going to talk about that, too. Right. Um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting, especially because, like, I'd never really heard of it associated with electrical storms, so I thought that was No, really that is neat. Um, and I wonder, you know, Crossroads, because it's supposed to be a portent of death, I would think that that, I wonder if the Crossroads oh. indicates... It's very symbolic. You know, which path... If you take this path, you might live. If you take this path, you won't. And I'm here to warn you, pick the right one. <laughs> right. Like, the love of that. Choose wisely. <laughs> uh, black dogs of the above description have been reported in almost all of the counties of England. Wow. So they're, 
Yeah, so they're very widespread, and it's it's the you know the large black dog with the glowing eyes that that is reported in these reports. So it's not like it's a you know it's just a black dog that's been seen or whatever. It's like a so these giant black dogs. There's a hell mouth in England. Prop. Oh, <laughs> I guess they need a Buffy. <laughs> they do. They need a Buffy. Um. So a lot of the time you'll hear howling. Uh, it'll be like a single howl or oftentimes three howls um, and then dead silence and that's that's typically the omen of death so it's like you'll hear the howling and it'll be either just once or it'll be three times and then nothing um, and that's like you know there's there's a death that's either just occurred or it's about to occur okay um, in old England dogs in particular uh, those with seven toes uh, are supposed to be able to see ghosts so I just thought that was an interesting fact that I found in, in this legend of the black dog thing. I didn't even know there were dogs with seven toes. I, I didn't either, but apparently that's a thing that exists. So seven wow. toed dogs can see ghosts. Okay. Um, and this is just kind of some background as to why maybe these, these black dog legends came to exist. Um, other legends say that all dogs are aware of the presence of ghosts. Uh, if they are near them, and that their barking, whimpering, or howling is often the first warning of a supernatural occurrence. Um, so same kind of idea like you were talking about with the shadow people, where it's like, yeah. like the animals can kind of sense them and can tell yeah. that something's there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they'll, they'll like bark or howl or whimper or whatever and just get, get out of dodge. Um, in Wales, only black dogs could see the death bringing hounds of Anwen, a, a character of Welsh mythology. Um, centuries ago, dogs were once feared as possible carriers of rabies, uh, so that might be a reason why people started seeing them as like a negative uh, animal or whatever, is because, you know, I mean, people were afraid to be they, diseased. I'm sure they looked scary, too. Rabid dogs, you know, they froth at the mouth, and they, they look scary, and they're aggressive, and right. so that, that makes sense. Right. And so, yeah, so sometimes even healthy dogs were killed after biting humans for fear of the disease. So it just kind of shows that like people started to fear dogs in general around that time, just because they were getting rabies and that could be passed on to people. Okay. Um, the first recorded story of ominous black coated dogs dates back to 1127 in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Uh, the paper talks about a group of huntsmen who traveled by night. They rode their large black horses and were accompanied by large black dogs with red glowing eyes. Um, doom or trouble seemed to befall every town where they were spotted, and so the negative association with black dogs began there, really. That makes me think of The Hobbit. No, The Lord of the Rings. The first oh, yeah, one yeah. With the, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the um, feel I get from that. Mm. Which is super interesting. I feel like you could totally use that in an urban fantasy where it's like there's just a pack of horsemen that run through a town and it's say like it kills a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and then they vanish or something or whatever. And yeah. they're accompanied by dogs and they're howling and then a bunch of people are dead. I think that's just a super interesting concept I, for us. I like story. that. Yeah. Um, on the morning of August 4th, 1577, a violent storm struck the town of East Anglia. It's said that a demon dog materialized in the parish church and rampaged, causing the steeple to topple and that the dog smashed the baptismal into tiny pieces. Uh, the hound is told to have killed three of the parishioners and scorched people as it passed them. So like there's that hellhound idea. Oh, yeah. Um, there were to have been marks of its huge claws on the door where it fled. Sightings of the dog continued after that around cemeteries, old bridges, riverbanks and lonely lanes where the dog was said to haunt. Uh, people told of encounters with the dog who encountered the dog said that they felt an icy chill on the back of their necks as the dog passed by. Um, no matter the encounter, each person described the dog the very same. Huge black ruff coated with large glowing red eyes and it's said that those claw marks are still in the door to this day. Oh my god, that gives me the chills! Super neat and I think uh, this is probably about the, the same thing. So I go into spe uh, specific examples here. So I've got two specific examples. Okay. Um, and the first one is super famous. It's called the Black Shuck. Uh, this one is pretty well known. Um, and it's one of the more famous black dog stories out there. I've heard it from uh, a lot of different sources. If you go and look up black dog, it's going to be one of the first ones that gets mentioned. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I even talking to my friend about black dogs, he was like, oh, yeah, like the Black Shuck. And I was like, yeah, exactly. Wow. So, okay. And I think it's related to this, um, this story that I just told. So it's in uh, Norfolk, Suffolk. I don't know how to say that. 
in the, the northern parts of Essex, uh, a black dog known as the Black Shuck, also known as Old Shuck or just Shock, uh, is regarded as malevolent with stories ranging from terrifying people or killing them outright to being a portent of death to themselves or a person close to the victim. Uh, there are tales that in 1577, which is when the last story took place, um, it attacked the church uh, in the market town of Bungay, killing two people appearing on the same day at the church in the nearby village of Lithburg and taking the lives of another three people and leaving claw marks in the door. Oh my lord. Yeah. Uh, and it says that they still remain today. So I don't know if you can go and see those or if they're like just... We should do that. I think that would be super interesting. I need to look up whether or not that is, you know, if those claw marks are still there and like if there are any more stories about them or whatever. So that was the Black Shuck, and he's he's one of the more famous ones. Like he's the I, one I've never heard that story. Yeah, yeah. So super interesting. Um, the next one is Padfoot. So okay. this is the one, and I think, like you said, uh, J.K. Rowling must have um, you know done her research on black dogs when she made Sirius and decided to call him Padfoot because of this or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so in Wakefield, Leeds, Pudsey, and some areas of Bradford, the local version of the legend is known as Padfoot. Uh, it's a death omen like others of its type. It may become visible or invisible and exhibits certain characteristics that give it its name. Um, so, you know, giant black dog kind of thing. Yes. Um, it is known to follow people uh, with a light padding sound of its paws. So that's where it also gets Padfoot. Yes. Um, then appearing in front of them or at their side. It can utter a roar unlike the voice of any known animal, and sometimes the trailing of a chain can be heard along with the pad of its feet. Creepy. Which is super weird, right? That can you is also creepy. Imagine, yeah, and can you imagine like putting that into an urban fantasy too, where it's like, you know, your main character is just walking down the street and then they hear the drag of a chain and they turn and there's this black dog. Oh, that super gives me cool. the chills. I love that. Yeah, it's best to leave the creature alone, which I think if I turned around and there was like a black dog with a chain and like glowing red glowing eyes, eyes, massive, I think I'd be like, puppy, oh, come here, you're puppy. I don't think so. Right. <laughs> uh, I think I would leave that one alone. I think I would just not. I think it'd be like, yeah. you're, you're good on your own. Solid. Um, uh, for if a person tries to speak it, speak to it or attacks it, uh, then the black dog will actually gain power over you. So that's the reason to leave it alone. Oh, so one story no. tells of man, I know, I know. One story tells of a man who tried to kick the pad foot and found himself dragged by it through the hedge and ditch all the way to his home and it left him under his window. So I guess he was left alive, which is ideal. And at his but, own home. So that's a good thing. And it took him home. He was like a taxi, but you know, like a <laughs> like a, poor, a bad one. Not a taxi great from one. hell, yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna tip that taxi taxi driver. Uh, but yeah, so that's Padfoot. And I think that one has like some super cool implications for urban fantasy as well, just with the, the chain that drags across the ground and the soft padding of the feet. I mean, uh, the horror of it, not that urban fantasy has horror in it, but it does have elements a lot of times of horror because we deal with monsters and that kind of thing. But right. just that sound of the rattling of the chain, especially if in the story you know it's coming and then you hear oh. it, but you don't see it and how scary that would be. I love that idea. That would be so cool. I'm probably going to end up using this in one of my books at some point. I think that's a great idea. Do it. Right. Cause like, I mean, just as I was, as I was uh, going through this research, I was like, that is insane. Like the, just the imagery you can get with that is yes. so cool. Yes. Um, so those are the two, two examples that I decided to go with. And then I have just like a last little note that not all myths about black dogs are negative. Um, so in Scotland, there's a strange, you know, if you have a strange dog coming to the house, uh, that means new friendship, regardless of the color of the dog. So whether a black dog comes to your house, that means new friendships are on the way instead of, okay. that, you know, I, I like that one. I, I like that one better. Yes. Uh, in England to meet a spotted or black and white dog on your way to business is the point, uh, to a business appointment is, uh, lucky. So right. if you're in a way to make a deal or whatever, and you come across a black and white dog, then you're good to go. Um, I like it. I do too. And then the Greeks thought that dogs could foresee evil and that black dogs were aware of Hecate, uh, the ancient Greek goddess of witchcraft, whose mm -hmm. presence is off, often, into, uh, geez, presence often foretold death. 
So interesting. I not can only see negative. A story with white dog, black dog. I mean, think of the imagery and all of that. You could have mm -hmm. the lucky ones and then the death ones. And you could, uh, oh, there's so much you could do with that. There's a lot you can do with it. And then, like you said, there were hellhounds in Supernatural, and they get used throughout the entire series. And they were invisible, and you could hear the howling and the growling and all of that. And then they would drag you to hell and, like, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, uh, there are bar guests. There, that's another word for them. And yes. that's the shapeshifter one. Um, okay. And so these guys, I've seen them used in the Toby Day series, the October Day series by Shannon McGuire. Yes. Um, so she's used those. And then you've got one, don't you, in, um, oh, which one was it? Dragon Watchers. Isn't it a bar guest at the beginning of your book? I think so. It's been a while since I've worked yet. on that one. Yeah. I, I think it was. Say, yeah. A bar guest. Yeah. Yeah. I so I mean, they get used all the time. Um, in, in these stories and I, I just think they're super cool. And yeah, there's so much potential. That's why I like doing these episodes, not just because I love the scary stories, but mm. because of, as our listeners are a lot of uh, uh, writers, there's so much potential, especially in fantasy and urban fantasy to use these, Absolutely. but not, you know, horror as well. Not yeah. just urban fantasy, fantasy, horror, and you could use these Think, like the shadow people you could use in a regular mainstream novel to add a scary element to it without it being, you know, a psychological thriller. It could be right. psychological, these right. shadow people. So yeah, you could use them in anything. I do. I love, I love doing these episodes. They're, they're cool. I kind of have goosebumps now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're fantastic. Cause it does, it gets me thinking about, Oh, well I could do it in this story or I could use it in a story like this or whatever. Yeah makes yeah. me want to write again hopefully i'll have time i keep thinking oh i'm gonna have time and then i never do right yeah I, I do have to mention that this this glass daughter number four gave to me for my birthday and so i told her i would use it on my myth and monster episode we don't really talk about what we eat and drink during during these episodes because they're just quick little episodes but i told her i would i would tell everybody that she gave it to me she's 15 so you gotta say what it looks like for the people who don't watch youtube oh that's right it says boss witch and it's got a little witch hat on it over the word boss and witch is in gold and it's a huge goblet like it's super huge. cute i love it it holds bountiful wine <laughs> yes and actually i'm drinking a uh vodka soda oh nice and well, you know vodka sodas. lots of vodka goes into this cup when you're making it <laughs> I bet it does. So hopefully your dad's cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Make sure you get to eat. Yeah, well, I can't cook. So right now I'm not capable. We might order out tonight. That sounds good to me. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening to our Myth and Monster episode. We've got another regular episode coming out next Tuesday. So we will see you then. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs>